All right, true believers. Well, it's time to take a look at the penultimate film of Phase Three of the MCU: Avengers Endgame. <clears throat> in 2018, 23 days after Thanos killed half of all life in the universe, Carol Danvers rescues Tony Stark and Nebula from deep space in the reunite with the remaining with the remaining with their remaining Avengers: Bruce Banner, Steve Rogers, Thor, Natasha Romanoff, and James Rhodes, and Rocket on Earth. Locating Thanos on an, un on an uninhabited planet. <clears throat> They plan to use the Infinity Stones to reverse his actions. But discovered Thanos has already destroyed them to prevent further use. Enraged, Thor decapitates Thanos. <clears throat> Five years later, in 2023, Scott Lang escapes from the Quantum Realm. Reaching the Avengers compound, he explains that he experienced only five hours while trapped. <clears throat> the arise of the Quantum Realm allows time travel. They ask Stark to help them retrieve the stones from the past to reverse the actions of Thanos in the present. Stark, Rocket, and Banner, who has since merged his intelligence with Hulk's strength, build a time machine. Banner knows that altering the past does not affect their present. Any changes create alternate timelines. Banner and Rocket travel to Norway, where they visit the escorting refugee settlement in New Asgard and recruit an overweight and despondent Thor. In Tokyo, Romanov recruits, recruits Clint Barton, who became a vigilante after the death of his family. Banner, Lang, Rogers, and Stark time traveled to New York City during Loki's attack in 2012. At the Sanctum Sanctorum, Banner convinces the agent when to give him the Time Stone after promising to return the various stones to their proper points in time. At Stark Tower, Rogers retrieves the Mind Stone from Hydra's sleeper agents, but Stark and Lang's attempt to steal the Space Stone fails, allowing 2012 Loki to escape with it. Rogers and Stark travel to Camp Lehigh in 1970, where Stark obtains an earlier version of the Space Stone and encounters his father, Howard. Roger steals Pym particle from Hank Pym to return to the present and spies his lost love, Peggy Carter. Meanwhile, Rocket and Thor travel to Asgard in 2013. Rocket extracts the reality stone from Jane Foster, while Thor gets encouragement from his mother, Frigga, and retrieves his old hammer, Mjolnir. <clears throat> Barnett, Romanoff, Nebula, and Rhodes travel to 2014. Nebula and Rhodes go to Mori and steal the power stone before Peter Quill can, while Barnett and Romanoff travel to Vormir. Solstone's keeper, Red Skull, reveals it can only be acquired by sacrificing a loved one. Romanoff sacrifices herself, allowing Barton to get the stone. Rhodes and Nebula attempt to return their own time, but Nebula is incapacitated when her cybernetic implants link with her past self, allowing 2014 Thanos to learn of his future self-success in the adventurous attempt to undo it. 2014 Thanos sends 2014 Nebula forward in time to prepare for his arrival. Reuniting the present, the Avengers place the stones into a gauntlet that Stark, Banner, and Rocket had built. Having the most resistance to the radiation, Banner wills the gauntlet and reverses Thanos' disintegrations. Meanwhile, 2014 Nebula, impersonating her future self, uses the time machine to transport 2014 Thanos and his warship to the present, which it then uses to destroy the Avengers' compound. President Nebula convinces 2014 Gamora to portray Thanos, but is unable to convince 2014 Nebula and kills her. Thanos overpowers Stark, Thor, and Mjolnir are wielding Rogers and summons his army to retrieve the stones, to time using them to destroy the universe and create a new one. The restored Stephen Strange arrives with the other sorcerers, the restored Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy, the Ravagers, and the armies of Wakanda and Asgard to fight Thanos' army. Danvers also arrives and destroys Thanos' warship, but Thanos overpowers her and seizes the gauntlet. Stark steals the stones and uses them to disintegrate Thanos and his army, at the cost of his life. Following Stark's funeral, Thor appoints Valkyrie as the new king of Asgard and joins the Guardians. Rogers returns the stones and Mjolnir to, Mjolnir to their proper timelines and remains to live with Carter in the past. In the present, an elderly Rogers passes his shield to Sam Wilson. And of course we all know how that went down, so yeah. Anyway, now let's take a look at the production of this film. In October 2014, Marvel announced a two-part sequel to Avengers Age of Ultron, titled Avengers Infinity War, part, part 1. Part 1 was scheduled to be released on May 4th, 2018, with Part 2 scheduled for May 3rd, 2019. In April 2015, Marvel announced that Anthony and Joe Russo would direct both parts of Avengers Infinity War, with back-to-back -back filming expected to begin in 2016. That same month, Kim and Peggy said the films were titled as two parts of a single film because of the shared elements between the films, but felt they would be two distinct films, and one story split across two films. By May 2015, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely signed on to write the screenplays for both parts of the film. 
In May 2016, the Russos revealed that they would be retitling the two films to further remove this misconception. That July, Marvel removed the film's title, simply referring to it as an untitled Avengers film. Viking the Russo brothers indicated the title was being withheld because it would give away plot details for this film and Infinity War. First report photography began August 10, 2017, under the working title Mary Lou 2 at Pine Land Studios in Fayette County, Georgia, with Trent Oblak serving as director of photography. The film, along with Infinity War, was shot using RELX IMAX 2D cameras. This marked the first time that a Hollywood feature film was shot entirely with IMAX, IMAX digital cameras. That same month, filming occurred in the Gulch area of downtown Atlanta, near the Five Points Marta Station in Piedmont Park. Feige explained that the films originally, were originally scheduled to be filmed simultaneously but were ultimately shot back to back, as it became too complicated to cross board them like that, and we found ourselves, again, something we always something would always pay the price. We want to be able to focus and shoot one movie, and then focus and shoot another movie. Anthony Russo originally felt it made more sense to shoot the films simultaneously due to financial and logistical re reasons considering the large number of cast members. And it suggested that some days we'll be shooting the first movie and some days we'll be shooting the second movie, just jumping back and forth. The 2013 Asgard scenes were shot at Durham Cathedral in Durham, England during production of Infinity War in early May 2017. Production wrapped on January 11, 2018. Initial filming took place in Dutchess and Ulster counties in New York in June 2018. Reaches began by September 7, 2018, and concluded on October 12, 2018. More reaches occurred in January 2019. Location shooting also took place in St. Abbs, Scotland, which dubbed, which doubled for a new Asgard in Norway. Evans and Hemsworth each received $15 million for the film. The film's official title, Avengers Endgame, and final U.S. release date of April 26, 2019, were revealed in the film's first trailer in December 2018. Visual effects for the film are created, by are created by Industrial Line of Magic, Weta Digital, DNEG, Framestore, Cinesite, Digital Domain, Rise, Lola VFX, Cantina Creative, Capital T, Technicolor VFX, and Territory Studio. As with previous MCU films, Lola worked on the de-aging sequences. The film features 200 de-aging and aging shots. Downey, Evans, Ruffalo, Hemsworth, Johansson, and Renner were de-aged to their 2012 appearances were scenes recreated from the Avengers. Michael Douglas, John Slattery, and Stanley were also de-aged from the 1970 New Jersey sequence. Douglas's appearance in the streets of San Francisco was referenced. Lola also aged up Evans for the final scene where he is portrayed as an elderly man, using some makeup and a stand in this reference. Jeffrey Ford and Matthew Schmidt served as the film's editors. And now finally, on to the music. In June 2016, Alan Silvestri, who composed the score for the Avengers, was revealed to be returning for both Infinity War and Endgame. The Russo started working with Silvestri on the Endgame score in early November 2018, and was completed in late March 2019. A soundtrack album featuring Silvestri's score was released by Hollywood Records digitally on April 26, 2019, with a physical release on May 24th. A music video for the track Portals, composed for the climactic scene in which reinforcements arrive for the Avengers, was released on June 13th. Sylvester described the score as having the most versatile tone of the franchise, which around thunderous percussion and powerful brass for the action sequences, to minimalist jazz inspired music for Ant Man in the Quantum Realm. Sylvester reprised his themes from the previous Avengers films and Captain America the First Avenger, including material work for Thanos and the Infinity Stones in Infinity War. He found writing the music to end Captain America's story poignant, since he had been on this journey with him since the beginning. The film also uses the Ant Man theme by Christoph Beck, the Doctor Strange theme by Michael Giancino, and the Captain Marvel theme by Pinar Toprak. Additionally, the songs Come and Get Your Love by Redbone and It's Been a Long Long Time with Julia Stein and Simi Can are used, after, have, after previously being heard in Guards of the Galaxy and Captain America the Winter Soldier, respectively. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. So overall, as as so overall, I really, really love this movie. As a fact, this is hands down my favorite Avengers film. So yeah. And of course it set up things that would happen in later films and shows and whatnot. So yeah. So overall, I give Avengers Endgame five arc reactors out of five. But anyway, tune in next time as Marvel May 2022 concludes with Spider-Man Far From Home. 
So until then, in the words of the late great Stan Lee, Excelsior.